Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Um, today's Q&A video is going to be a question that I've asked myself and, and a couple other folks have asked also, and that is, why are you doing this? What is the point where are you trying to go with this YouTube channel? And that's a fair question. So without any further ado, why the heck are we doing this? Italian 2, engines, 11, 27, 7, and 22, investigator 1, ladder 27, and safety 1, house fire, CO1, Maple Street, Army, Echo, Italian 2, I know in previous videos I've talked about my background and I, I have some, I have a lot of experience with film photography, um, both as a hobbyist and enthusiast, but also um, professionally through work as a police officer and a crime scene investigator and ultimately running the crime scene section. So when I retired, I decided I wanted to get back into photography as a hobby. I needed to have something to spend my money on. What fun is retirement if you don't have an expensive hobby? Mm -hmm. So it seemed like photography was a uh, was a good way to go. Um, something I'm familiar with, something I like doing, something I know something about. Um, but I wanted to to try and do some different things. So no filming crime scenes or accident scenes. I've already done that. So I guess I have to ask myself, what kind of photography do you want to do if you're not doing the old crime scene photography. And being the kind of guy I am, do a lot of research, look into things, I don't approach anything lightly. Um, I started looking into photography websites and, and searching the internet and trying to figure out what, what was out there. And uh, one of the things I quickly figured out is there are dozens, if not hundreds of types of different photography um, styles or, or types out there and each of them has its own unique demands and things that it requires of the photographer and the equipment. So I had to have some idea of where I wanted to go with it. With my background in public safety, I knew that was something I was interested in. It was, you know, the ability to still maintain some contact with that community was kind of attractive. So I thought about Again, photographing um, police cars, fire apparatus, things like that. And again, you can search in the internet and you'll find there's lots of people out there who do it. Um, I thought maybe this would be something I could do. I could do it for the area I live in. I'm just uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina, I'm focusing on that area. And that seemed like a good place to start. Like a lot of things, once I got going... Uh, a little more earnestly in, in this pursuit. Um, things change direction slightly. You become more interested in some elements, less interested in another. So that helps you sort of focus in on where you're going. And I think ultimately I ended up creating a relatively different, albeit a, a hybrid photography style or, or technique or, or category that I'm interested in. So mine photography tends to be a combination of things, right? It's an automotive photography. I'm photographing police cars, ambulances, and fire trucks. Um, it's low light photography because I'm out photographing fire scenes at night. Um, it's portrait photography. I like taking candid photos of the of the men and women who do these jobs um, and make them available to them. So there's that element. It's kind of a journalistic or a documentary type of, of photography. So there were just a lot of different styles I was trying to incorporate. Uh, and so as I got into this hobby a little bit more, I started doing more and more research uh, about how to do certain things, how to improve my photography. And one of the things I figured out early on was, was there wasn't a lot of information out there specifically on what I was doing. There are a ton of photography websites and YouTube channels out there. And believe me, I've looked at most of them, follow many of them, and I've learned a lot from them. Um, you know, 
taking the elements I needed, but there was no one who was specifically looking at what I wanted to do, whether it was photographing fire scenes or getting good candid crew shots, things like that, um, that again, required a little bit of skill. Uh, and that's when I started thinking about maybe this is something that I could use this channel for as a, as a way to start sharing that information. I'd done some research. I have compiled some techniques uh, that I use that work well for me. Um, there are still things I'd like to figure out how to do better. And this seemed like a, a good place or if there was a place where, where photographers who like me want to do these types of things, if we could go and share it, seemed like a, a good way to, um, to go with this channel. So the answer to what kind of photographer I am is I, I haven't really named it yet. I refer to myself as a public safety photographer or an action photographer. Uh, sometimes I call it more journalistic in nature, but also candid street photography. All of those elements come to play, and I like to think I borrow bits and pieces of all of that to create the, the images, the photos that I do. A uh, good question to ask is, does the type of photography or what you're taking pictures of make a difference? And the short answer is, yeah, I think it does. Um, different types of photography put different demands on the photographer and the equipment. And so what might work for a wedding photographer may not work for me. Um, you know, what works well for a classic portrait photography may not work for me. Um, I, that's a great example. I, I know, you know, as you read all these reviews and, and portrait photographers and they talk about lenses with beautiful bokeh and blurry backgrounds, that's not typically something I want. Um, I use my backgrounds as kind of a setting. So it, again, they're candid portraits, but what's in the background matters. So for me, depth of field was actually more important. I wanted as much in focus as possible. Um, sometimes, I may want to blur a background, but, but typically I, I use the background as the setting. It's important um, to help sort of define or, or highlight what the subject is or what the subject is doing. So yeah, the style of photography does start to matter when you look at what you're going to need, what equipment you're going to need, um, what techniques you're going to use. So as a public safety slash action slash fire photographer. What is it I'm trying to do? Why are, why are my needs different than what other folks are doing? Um, well, consider what I'm trying to photograph. I'm doing everything from daylight photographs to night photography, low light. But even when doing low light, the low light can be tricky because there's typically a lot of bright lights at the scene. I'm um, trying to figure out how to best capture them. Obviously, if there's actual fire, um, that creates some additional challenges um, as a photographer. For instance, I have found that my camera's autofocus systems really struggle um, when I'm trying to photograph flames and smoke. Uh, sometimes the autofocus just hunts, and then other times I simply get a message that says autofocus failure. This can be especially frustrating because I will acknowledge I am a little bit obsessed with clarity and detail in my photos. So sharpness becomes really important. I have a couple of prime lenses that work well, but because again of the nature of the scenes, I can't always move around to frame the photo the way I want because of the limitations placed by those controlling the the scene. My lens length requirements can vary also. If I'm photographing apparatus, I'm typically using a, a short, almost wide angle lens. However, on a scene, I need the, the reach of a longer telephoto lens. And then again, for some of the candid work where I'm trying to capture the crews, uh, an even longer telephoto lens is, is sometimes helpful. While I don't do a lot, I do some videoing, either of scenes or apparatus or, or vehicles. And so that's another element 
that I bring in where I, I'm going to need good quality videos along with good quality photographs. So all of these things combine to make what I think are kind of a unique set of needs or wishes when it comes to equipment. And so what I'm hoping is I can use this channel as a way to help explain some of the things that I've done and as a place where other photographers can share their knowledge and insight and maybe help me get better at what I'm doing. So hopefully that was at least interesting. Uh, you found out a little bit more about me, about the type of photography I'm into doing, and maybe this is something that might interest you. And if it does, I would ask that you like and subscribe to the video. I am always looking for input on ideas, um, whether it's equipment, whether it's techniques, uh, or even on videos. So if you have any thoughts or comments, please feel free to, to leave them in the comment section or contact me through one of my other social media accounts. Um, I would really love the, the feedback. Otherwise, thanks for tuning in and we'll just see you in the next video.